First, your name and what group you're with. Uh, Bill Livesey, uh, L-I-V-S-E-Y, and this is the Tampa Bay Bradley Manning Support Network. So tell our listeners about the Tampa Bay Bradley Manning Support Network. Why is, what is it doing and why is it important? We began about a month and a half ago in solidarity with the National Bradley Manning Support Network, which is wonderful. If you go to bradleymanning.org, you can be hooked up with them. And they were formed to advocate for not only the release of Bradley Manning, but to advocate for the conversation that he wished to create by releasing the information that he did. For people who don't know, tell us who is Bradley Manning and why is he in the brig in in, uh, Maryland? Uh, Bradley Manning is a private in the Army, and he has been incarcerated over a thousand days. In fact, it will be three years on June 1st. He, because of he was a, a techie, really, and he had access to a lot of computer data and analysis, and he began to see over time that what we were doing in both Iraq and in Afghanistan was contrary to what the American people were being told. He began to see that we were going into places where we said we were not going, and that the civilian casualties were mounting. And so he released information about communications uh, that proved that we were actually making plans to do the things that we were doing, contrary to what the, our designated policy was in the region. And he released most famously Collateral Murder, which is the video that shows reporters and civilians being killed by a U.S. Army. And you've been in contact with their legal team because of actions that you are planning here. Tell us about that. Yes. Um, once we started coordinating here, they, they're a wealth of resource and a wealth of information. So I felt that there was no need to recreate the wheel. They have lots of good information about organizing, fundraising, and getting information out since there seems to be a media blackout. Um, and so I began speaking with people uh, on the phone and more often than not online in Maryland and with um, their satellite office, which is in Oakland, California, which is called Courage to Resist. And they began giving me information about the current status of Private Manning and advising people to really write to him personally, that that's really the only hope that he gets in all of this, is knowing that there are people organizing for him around the country. You wrote to him, and he wrote you back. You have the letter with you right now. What, yes. Can you read it? I do, yes. He wrote um, back to me, Dear Billy, It means more than I can express to have a gay man and activist organizing on this issue for me. I know you can put your talents in many places. Thank you for using them to expose the truth about the war and for helping me. All the best, uh, Private Bradley Manning. What did you think about that letter when you got it? It was moving to me because I understand... I understand the position that he might be in. I mean, not completely, obviously, because... But I've been a lifelong activist, and I understand that. And I understand that that point in life where you make a decision, and I relate it to myself personally in that I made a decision a long time ago during the AIDS crisis that sometimes it's necessary to break the laws for a greater good, and that's why I got involved with ACT UP back in the eighties. And my feeling about what Private Manning did was that he saw information and access to information that was damning to the United States. But it didn't put the United States or the U.S. military in jeopardy. And the fact that it's come out most recently in the 35-page statement that he read, that he gave great thought to what he was releasing, and he actually approached the New York Times, the Washington Post, and they either ignored or didn't get back to him before he ever released the information to WikiLeaks. And that information, I think, is necessary and crucial for all of us as taxpayers, as citizens, to make an informed decision about what's going on in the war. So I think what he did was rather brave. I think he knew what he was doing. I think the fact that he admitted to that chunk of it, that he actually didn't release this, that was no longer in question, shows that he understood going into this that it was probably certainly against military policy for him to do this. But he gave great care to what he released, how it was released, and he wanted to create a conversation with the American people about the war. And I understand that mindset, and I think it should be applauded for being a hero. So it meant a lot to me to know that I think he is an activist, and so for him to acknowledge me as that means that he, I hope that he takes some solace in knowing that there are people around the country who aren't just 
just clicking like on Facebook saying, gosh, it's too bad that this kid's behind bars, or they're not informed at all, but they are taking an activist approach to not only freeing him, because who knows if that's even possible, but to having the conversation that he wanted to have about our foreign policy. There's been a recent development in the case. The judge recently ruled that the documents in the case would not be available to the, the public or to the press. Why? Tell us about that and what you think about that. I think that that's ridiculous. It's like having a, a, a trial in a vacuum, and the result can come out at the end without any analysis along the way. There's an effort being made, coordinated nationally, to call a, a Major General, I don't have the name over there, um, it's Pennington, um, and I have his phone number. And we're all going to be calling him because he has the authority to re release that sort of gag order is how I look on it. I don't know if that will be successful, but I think it's important that the Department of Defense and the military know that there are people watching what's going on. And I think it's an, it's an affront to to journalism and freedom of the press. All of this is, because really, Bradley Manning is a whistleblower that should be protected. But what's them to stop an, inve uh, an investigative journalist who's doing a story about the war or, or anything in the Middle East for being charged with aiding and abetting the enemy by releasing information that's simply the truth that might be contrary to what we're being fed in press releases from the White House or from the Pentagon. So I think it, it will further silence any efforts at real reporting if, if, if this prosecution is allowed not only to continue but ends up in some horrific sentence. And it will send a message to whistleblowers around the country that they need to be quiet as well. And there's a coordinated day of actions on June 1st. Uh, are you going to be involved in that, and what might people in Tampa expect? Yes, um, there's, there's a coordinated effort around the country. Obviously, the national call is for people to go to Fort Meade in Maryland because the court martial is expected to start that Monday, June 3rd, and thousands of people will show up in Maryland. In Tampa, I think, is a unique place because CENTCOM is here at MacDill Air Force Base. And CENTCOM is the place where many of the decisions about what really goes on in our, our military endeavors in Iraq and Afghanistan are made. And so you can expect to have that, that discussion happen and a solidarity action in Tampa to support not only the free speech, freedom of the press, and of course, freeing Bradley Manning on June 1st. If people want to find out more about the Tampa Bay Support Network for Bradley Manning, where, where can they go to find out, or where can where do you guys meet? There is a Facebook page. You can go to Tampa Bay Bradley Manning Support Network. And it will come up, like it, and there's posts that are made to it almost every day, and it's interactive. If you have questions, you can ask. I certainly advise people to go to the national site and get involved as well, which is just bradleymanning.org. We've been meeting every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Um, in Curtis Hickson Park, downtown Tampa, and it's likely we'll continue to do so every Thursday from now until June 1st.